Hi, I'm going to be showing you how to sharpen the back bent gouge. Now this is one of those specialty gouges that um, I hardly ever use, but it can, like a lot of those specialty gouges, when you really need that tool, it just comes in so handy. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to sharpen it. It's a little tricky, uh, different positioning on the stone. Now I would recommend that you watch first the lesson on sharpening a curved gouge, and that's going to give you just a sort of a, a rundown of the basics of sharpening. And then, so this is just in addition to that, just a slightly different shaped gouge. So if you look at it from the side, okay, it comes like this, bends down, but if you look at the blade, it's curved this way, where the spoon bent was curved the other way. All right, similar curvatures of the shape of the metal, but if you look at the blade, that's where the difference comes, where you've got the spoon bent actually scooped like a regular gouge, but this one is in reverse. And the times when this is needed is if you're trying to get into some areas where you need to have the tool sort of lifted off the wood and you want to be able to create curves like this. And so um, very handy when you need it, but quite often I use other gouges in place of this. Uh, but uh, again, when you need it, <laughs> it's really, really valuable and uh, you, you won't regret actually purchasing it. So I'm going to show you how to do this and just going to start out by putting some water on the stone. And the, the uh, difference with this one is just simply the positioning that you need to lay this on the stone. The, the actual bevel is on top of the tool. All right, if you look at the inside, there's no bevel on there. If you look at the inside, that is, I don't want to actually change that shape. This is the side that I want to put against the stone and it actually has to be towards the edge a little bit further. Okay, and then again, this is where you're gonna sort of rock it to feel a flat. Now, before I do that, I am gonna put a marker on it just so we can see where it's hitting. Okay, so position it there, and I can feel a flat right about there. And I'm gonna start just rotating it like so, just that length of that curve. And I'm gonna look at it again. No, nope, see now right there, I'm just hitting just the blade, or right at the edge of the blade. So I need to actually lower it down a little bit so it hits that full back side. And I'm doing just a slight rotation with my wrist so that it reaches that whole curve. Okay, still, uh, you can see it's hit in the center, but it still looks like it's really focusing on right at the very edge. It's very tricky to do this, and I'm just gonna lower it down even more. Okay, it's, I think it's getting there. It's hard to tell. No, I'm still really focusing on just the edge. Now I'm actually putting quite a bit of pressure on it. If you can see, my fingers are almost sort of white knuckled. <laughs> and you can actually see on the, the fingers, you actually create a dent. Okay, I think my uh, tool originally had a little bit of a double bevel, a little bit of a curve on the end of it, and that's what it's actually hitting right now. It's sort of hitting the high spot, so if you look at it from the side, there was a high spot right about there. So I think I'm okay, and that just needs to, a lot of metal needs to be removed. Because I don't use this tool very much, I don't really sharpen it very often, so. Okay, you can see it's sort of extending that line there, or that the clear line without the pen is actually getting a little bit wider. 
but I still think I need to lower it down even more because it's not reaching that full flat. Okay, you can see it's starting to hit a little bit of the flat surface there, but it's still really mainly focusing on that, um, just the edge. So just keep on doing this, trying to get that as flat as possible. Okay, I think we're getting there. But it is important to make sure that from there, right at the tip, all the way to the base is a flat surface. Okay, we are getting there. Yeah, there definitely was a little bit of an extra curve on that, so I, there's a, actually a lot of metal to remove. Okay, now we're getting there. Now, if you look at what's happening in the center, this was actually ground um, with a bit of a hollow ground there, a hollow grind right in the center. So you can see a little bit of it it's actually hasn't hit that center, but it's hitting at the base here and also at the tip. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And um, so I just want to do that, make sure that I get a little metal burr along the inside edge. All right, and I think we are getting there. So I'm just going to sort of fast forward this <laughs> and uh, pretend there's a little metal burr in there. Now, what I would probably do um, with as much metal as I would need to remove on this, I would probably actually start with a 1200. Take as much and flatten it out as much as I could, remove that metal, and then get to the point where that there's a little uh, that my wire edge, and then move to the 8000, and that would end up um, really sort of smoothing out that surface. Um, it's just a lot more work on the 8000 than on the 1200. So you can remove a lot of that and speed it up quite a bit and then move up. So basically start at a rougher stone and then keep moving up. Okay, so um, basically when you get that little wire edge along the inside edge of that, that's where you take your slip stone that fits as closely as possible and that's where you're going to come in and remove that or take, take that little wire edge and flip it to the outside and then bring it back on here and very lightly go along and just make it go back and forth inside and outside until that little wire edge falls off. Okay, now this is where you take your leather strop and Go on the inside and try to get that as flat as possible along there. You don't want to do too much lifting up like that. Um, you want to keep it as flat as possible. And now this is a little trickier just because of the positioning, but basically just sort of go along the edge. Uh, you know, try to sort of fit it in there as much as possible without doing anything like that where you're going to be, um, you know, sort of dragging it like that. You really want to try to get that um, position, this bevel, as flat against there as possible and just sort of walk it along and twist it. Okay, and at that point it should be razor sharp. <laughs>